Hey, what's going on? This is live here on Sports Vibes. Uh, I'm your host, Keith, joined as always by my co-host, Inf. Inf, bro, how's everything with you? It's going good. You know, the Knicks most recently won, so it's always it's always good coming on here fresh off of a win. Facts, bro. And we are looking like we're going to extend this to a, another little winning streak as we go and uh, take on the Rockets. So I want to talk about... Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> No, I was like, yeah, I don't want to jinx it. Yeah, exactly. Just, yeah, right. Because it's the Rockets, but hopefully we can keep keep it going. Yeah, because KPJ went off for like what fifty the other day. Yeah, he, to, to think that he was worth just a second round pick is still bro, crazy. bro. It's some character issues. If he ain't had them character issues, well, if he didn't have the character issues, he wouldn't be worth a second. But yeah. you know, the Knicks probably should have picked up the phone just to see, because he's a walking bucket. Literally. Yeah, yeah. But the big story today has been Damian Lillard. Uh, but before we jump into it, I want to say shout out to the chat. Thank you, guys. May 4th. What's up? How we move next TV. Salute to you. How's everything going with you guys? Let me know how your day's going so far down in the chat. But when it comes to uh, Damian Lillard, uh, I dropped a video. Apparently, the audio is too too low. I apologize for that. Hopefully, the audio is fine now and we can discuss it. So, if would you go ahead and, and try to make a move for Lillard? All right, I'll keep it simple. No, <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I mean, I'm sure to our regular viewers, that's not a surprise because same way I was against us trading for Bradley Beal, I was against us trading for Levine. I am against us trading for Damian Lillard for multiple reasons. Taking his obvious skill set aside, because he's arguably one of the greatest point guards currently right now. He makes too much money, way too much money, and he's too old to make the money that he's going to be making when he's on the Knicks. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, I was looking at his contract in the video, and at the end of that, uh, and the end of that contract, we're going to be paying him upwards of almost you know fifty million dollars a year, and I'm like, that's crazy. We already got players on our team that we have to potentially extend. That would be Julius Randle. And we've got to extend R.J. Barrett at some point within the next two or three years. So for us to trade for a Damian Lillard, a player that's at the end of his championship window, I think it just doesn't mesh where we are as a team. So, chat, let me know. Do you guys think the Knicks should make this move and, and, and try to acquire a Damian Lillard? Uh, Man, like I was saying earlier, like if, if we can get Damian Lillard just for draft picks this season for now, then sure, you know, because he would obviously give us a good boost this season. But after that, I mean, is it really worth it to have him when in the off season we no longer will have any cap space? And like you mentioned, we still got to extend Randall. We have to at this point, and we're not going to have enough money for any other supporting cast, any other players to help out. So even if we were to somehow get him without giving up RJ or OB, obviously we probably have to give up like Mitchell Robinson, who, you know, I'm fine with that or Kevin Knox, whatever the case may be. But it's just like, we're going to have no money. We're going to have open roster space and we're not going to have what we need to, to get the right supporting cast around a Lillard and Randall tandem. Yeah, I think a lot of people are looking at the trade for a Lillard and they're saying, all right, where where we are right now with a team that's lacking talent. If we can go and get a Dame Lillard and try to incorporate him into our chemistry, our culture, it might put us over the top and it might be something that we can carry into next season. But what I would like people to look at is, you know, check the cap situation. It, Mitchell, not Mitchell Robinson, Nerlens Noel isn't guaranteed to, to return you know Nerlens Noel has been balling he's been playing great defensively and he's been a solid starting center so I don't think we can assume that Nerlens Noel is going to turn around and say okay I'll re-sign with you guys for a reasonable deal and be a backup mm -hmm. to Mitch and I'm not sure if we're going to want to ex uh, pay Nerlens Noel a multi-year deal which he's going to command based off his performance this season I would say you're not going to sit there and give him a multi-year deal to come off the bench. And then you're not going to have Mitch be happy with now being stuck coming off the bench instead of Noel's uh, coming off the bench. So I just think 
it's not uh, as simple as go out there, trade Dame Lillard, put him on this team, and it'll be something that'll allow us to be championship contenders. I mean, May the 4th said trade uh, Mitch quickly and Rose with ease. Mm. I don't I don't like that. <laughs> I, I don't like it. Honestly, I don't. Um, I don't like it for multiple reasons. One, why why trade quickly? He's, nice. Why are we giving up somebody who could be a staple in our team? A really young player that can, we can easily continue to develop. And why? I mean, Rose, I get it. Like, you know, he's at this point bouncing around from place to place in his career, but I just don't like giving up quickly. I'll give up Mitch and Rose with like a, a first and a second pick, I guess. Maybe two firsts. I don't know, but I'm, I'm not giving up quickly for Lillard. That's why, why would you give up someone who's going to be not on that level, but close to that level in a couple years for somebody who's getting like getting older. I don't think we would even be in the position to really trade Rose because with Rose, we'd have to probably do like a, a sign and trade because I think he's at the end of his contract and he would have to agree to go to Portland. And from what I've seen, what I've heard, Derek Rose and, and Tibbs really like being together, working together. So I don't see us moving him and replacing mm -hmm. him with a, a Damian Lillard. And I don't want to move quick at all i think quick has been uh, a key piece for us this season and i don't want to move on from him without fully realizing or fully understanding what he could be in this league you know it's still a debate whether he's a one or two or he's just a combo we need to make sure that he is a player that is part of our future before we decide to you know include him in any deals no, I agree. And then another name I keep seeing in the chat is DeRozan. People talking about DeRozan. Mm. The, Frozen the DeRozan. <laughs> the last player the Knicks need is DeRozan. Like, who do you, what are you going to do with DeRozan? You're going to put him on the floor with Julius Randle and R.J. Barrett? Who's shooting threes? Who? Come on. Like, that. that's terrible. He is literally them, too. He's a player who's going to clog up the paint. When he's trying to drive, he's going to dish out. He's going to take mid-range. He's going to do exactly what Rand do and RJ do right now. What we need is somebody who can spread the floor, which obviously Lillard would spread the floor, but not for, wait, not for the money that we'd have to give him. But, yeah, we, we need players that can actually spread the floor and not take up the same kind of offensive space that Rand do and RJ take up. So I, I wouldn't even attempt to go for a DeRozan in the offseason. And it's annoying that that's what all the reports are about, how DeRozan now wants to go to the Knicks in the offseason. No way. He wants to? Yeah. We don't need DeRozan. I think DeRozan is... R.J. Barrett could be DeMar DeRozan in his final form. But the way he's been shooting and with the way R.J. has looked with his mid-range shot as the season has progressed, I think R.J. could be a better version of DeRozan. I think putting DeRozan on this team is just like what you said. It's going to compromise us out there on offense. You know, DeRozan, he can get into the paint and, and he can knock down that mid-range shot, but the fact that he's not a threat really from three is really going to compromise us. And we're already a team that's not putting up a lot of threes. You know, luckily we're making them at a good clip, but, yeah. you know, we need to have more threats out there and, and not – go out there and, and make the game more so three or on five when it comes to, like, three-point shooting. Mm -mm. Man, I mean, because with DeRozan on the floor, like, we're easy to defend. Just clog the paint. Mm -hmm. would, and, like, opposing teams just put two big men on the floor and dare us to shoot, basically. And then also in the chat, they're talking about De'Aaron Fox, which I know you also, um, you mentioned in one of your videos previously where, if he became available, that would be like a point guard to go for, which uh, they're also talking about the fact that he can't defend. Uh, what do yeah, you that, <laughs> that's true. But we're not going to say sit here and say Damian Lillard is an elite defender either. So if you're going to tell me I'm going to take a point guard that's going to be explosive, dynamic, is going to involve his teammates and is going to be a leader. But I'm going to get one that's younger, that isn't going to play defense of uh, i understand that but I, I still think 
Fox, the fact that he his age is is a lot lower than Damian Lillard. How old is Fox? What is Fox? Twenty three. Around there. Yeah. He's super young. Yeah, and then Lillard is I think thirty or thirty one. I'd rather invest in a player that's not on their second max contract. I'd rather trade for a player that's not in their second max contract because then they can earn that second max for us. I'm tired of us going out there and trading for players that earn their money for another team. And then when they get here, they're not the goods. So De'Aaron Fox, at least you trade for him. He has his best years ahead of him, you would assume. I, I can't sit here and be confident in saying Damian Lillard has his best years ahead of him right now. That's a fair argument. Although, I mean, I don't know. I, I think I would personally rather go for Lillard instead of um, Fox. Yeah, like Lillard's obviously older, but if we're comparing just specifically those two, like taking uh, Lillard's contract out of the situation, if we're comparing them to it, like I would rather a Lillard just because, one, he's already a proven player. He's a proven playoff player. He's a proven closer. Um, and even though he's not like defensively, he's similar to um, – De'Aaron, Lillard still knows how to win games with his skill set, and he still outplays the point guard that he goes against. Whereas, like, there's times where De'Aaron Fox doesn't do that. He does it against Lonzo when he's playing against <laughs> Lonzo. But aside from that, I mean, there's times where he's just getting killed. So You see what CJ be saying? That Lonzo's always ducking De'Aaron Fox? He's always, quote-unquote, injured? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's, it's proven, though, so I don't know. <laughs> I mean... The thing is, I'm not going to sit here and say De'Aaron Fox is a better player than uh, Damian Lillard. It's just at that price. I want to invest in someone that I think will be with us longer. And I think Damian Lillard might only have another three or four years of elite play. I won't even say elite play. I would just say, yeah, let me say elite play. Because if I say something else, they might kill me in the comments. But (laughs) let's say he has another two or three years of, of, of elite play. You know, this season, he's shown to have some injury concerns. And how are we going to build around him in ways that Portland can't? When you have contracts like that, you pretty much have to find some way to stuff them all together with two other key uh, or elite players like the Nets did, like the Cavs did way back when. That's the only way you're going to work around having that many uh, uh, two-year not two years, second max deals on your your contract. I mean, on your roster. To be honest with you, not yet. I mean, it, it would be difficult to work with. You would have to do like what a Brooklyn Nets did and basically mm-hmm. trade and get get these players, and then have literally no one else on your roster, no future, no nothing, no draft picks, and then just get people for the low who are free agents. Well, one of those free agents would be Lonzo. I think somebody mentioned him. No, I mean, like, literally, like, like how they got um, LaMarcus and how they got Blake. And, how, like, oh, you know, again, oh, because oh. th- there's no way Brooklyn could go for anybody in actual free agency competitively. You know? Yeah, they can't. league minimum. Yeah. And that's where but, we would be. Mm-hmm. That's exactly where we would be, requesting league minimum players, but yet we don't have the three stars to build exactly. around. Exactly. Like, so it wouldn't, and like, yeah, we have Randall and we have RJ, but if I'm a player like LaMarcus where, you know, I'm basically at this point looking for a ring, I ain't going to the Knicks with Lillard and Randall when there's Kevin Durant, James Harden, Kyrie right there for the same amount of money. Mm-hmm. So it, right now ain't the time to go for like a Lillard. Yeah. Anyway, it wasn't time to go for a Beal or anything like that because we're going to get them and we'll probably get just as far as we're going to get this season with them on the team. Because mm-hmm. are we really going to be that much better than, let's say, a Portland team talent wise? Because Portland is know. talented. I don't know. Dame's they always are. Dame's upset saying that the Trailblazers haven't done enough for him. But I mean, they went out there, yeah. CJ, Norman Powell. Signed Cantor. I, I mean, they haven't really done much for him. All those players you name in our regular, like subpar players. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even know if Cantor starts in half the NBA right now. Like, put him on half the teams. I, he's still a bench player. So, I, I mean, they haven't. Like, because when, when you look at what other teams are doing, 
And you look at Portland, who they're always around there, but not there. They they haven't done enough for him. They really have. I mean, the biggest thing they did was sign Melo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Melo well, took a year off. Well, he, he he was forced to take a year off. Well, they tried the experiment with Whiteside. They had Whiteside for a brick. Yeah, but he dirt. I mean, what team is he on? <laughs> I think he's on Sacramento, yeah. He's in Maybe purgatory. Like, they haven't. And yet you got all these other teams. Like, look at Utah. Look at what they're doing for Donovan Mitchell. They went, they traded for Mike Connolly with his crazy contract. But they made that happen. And now they're the number one seed, you know? You got all these other teams really. In, look at what Denver's doing with Jamal and Joe Chick. I thought that their squad was already good, and then they went and traded for Aaron Gordon. Like you got all these other teams doing things, and then you just got Portland, and they get Norman Powell, and Dame's supposed to be like, "All right, we finally got the guy we need." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What you call the Woodshed Nine One Four is saying, adding Dame to the fourth seed in the East makes us contenders. It makes us a tougher out in the, the third round, I would think. I don't know if we still beat the elite teams in the East. I mean, we're the fourth seed, but you got to also remember this season is a weird season. And you're going to see teams that elevate themselves are going to be the best coach teams. And yes, the Knicks are going to be one of the best coach teams in the league. But when we get to the playoffs and the dynamic kind of changes, talent at some point is going to win out. And we'll see... That even though we're coached to a T, that we just don't have the the talent up and down the roster to really be legitimate contenders. We can be good. We can be competitive in every game. But I don't think with Lillard, with Randall, and then taking what you have to take away is going to make us or leave us as legitimate contenders. No, yeah. I mean, I I, I don't think adding Dane to us this year is going to do much for us because I feel like with our current squad, we're going to make it to the set. We definitely have what we need to make it to the second round. I think we can beat the Hawks in round one. Second round, we're going against Brooklyn. I don't think adding Dame is going to give us the edge we need to beat <laughs> Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> maybe not even Philly either. I don't yeah. think we'd have enough to beat Philly. Yeah, I don't think adding Dame Especially now, especially right now, because we only have nine games left in the season. Like that, that that's it. We'd have nine games left for him to get used to our style of play. Well, technically, we can't. This is all hypothetical. We can't I, add him. I know, yeah, we have nine games left, and that's not enough for him to learn how to play with us for us to then, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if we go through, if we go through with a trade in the off season, I just don't see how we can build this team deep enough to really be legit contenders. I mean, like, let me, let me not say that. Cause I say legit contenders and people might think, I, I mean like playoff contenders, we won't be legit championship contenders. I won't come into next season and say the Knicks better make, it's going to be finals or bust. You know, you don't, you're not going to have that kind of team aligned. Yeah, because if, if we were to make a little trade, that, first off, that has to be the very first thing we do. Get mm -hmm. the trade down. That way we understand exactly where our money is. That way we know who to go for. And also, if a trade like that were to happen, then we'd probably see a lot of these free agents more open to coming to the Knicks. But it would obviously have to be for a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. But... If we're going to talk about the now and what we have to uh, look forward to this season, there is a player that the Knicks went out and acquired, and that's going to be Luca Vildoza. So I dropped a video on Luca, and I like what I, I've seen from him. In fact, I sent you a couple videos. Did you see and did you like what you saw from him too? Oh, nah, yo. He <laughs> he looked like he's a walking bucket. I ain't even going to lie. Like, He's somebody who, like we were just saying earlier, that we need. He's somebody who could shoot. He could spread the floor. And he has a quick release, too. Like, he was just, like, I want to say he was Jaying people, but they weren't that close to him for it to really be a J because his release is just, like, just, mm -hmm. he lets fly. And, I mean, one of the criticisms is that I don't know how I feel about his court vision um, just because a couple of the shots he took were contested and there were people on the floor open. Um, just from 
I saw a couple of highlights from multiple different games that he played in Euro League, and he would definitely need to work on his court vision. But aside from that, I mean, he seems like a hustler. Like he plays defense, he gets steals often, um, and he can shoot. Yeah, yeah, I like. I like what I, I saw because he was able to do a lot of things. He might not be able to do anything at an elite level, but he can. He has a lot in his bag, and when he mixes it up, it leaves the defense or the defender, you know, on their heels. And he can go right. He can go left. He can pass with his right hand. He can pass with his left hand. He can pull up. He can, you know, shoot off the dribble. He can attack. He's crafty. I mean, it was it was like a dope. Like I'm, that's why I'm happy I had the channel because I was able to research it and kind of really see what he can do. And I'm encouraged by this signing. I think the, the Knicks really went out there and, and they might have another diamond in the rough. And they have a pretty decent track record. Uh, they did it with IQ later on in the first round. And maybe they might have did this again with an international prospect. I mean, the only issue, which obviously they're saying in, um, well, Brennan, I ain't going to try to pronounce his last name, mm -hmm. is saying in the chat, <laughs> he's not going to get no burn. And I mean, because if you think about it, Iggy was the same way. In, in, in Dingus, Branzingus, whatever his name, he was the MVP of his league. And <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, hopefully he's, I mean, because a lot of the reports that you posted said that like he's a hustler, like he's somebody who, you know, he goes out and he really works hard. So if he can show that in practice, then he'll get some burn. So hopefully he goes as hard as he needs to pause. I mean, he's just out there playing. <laughs> yeah. The thing is though, <laughs> he probably, he may not, I won't say probably cause I won't know, but I'd be excited if he does. I mean, he's, he's in shape. It's not like he's a player they're picking up off the street. They had to buy him out from his uh, previous team. So he's a player that if he can understand the system, if he can be a smart IQ guy and, and be a contributor, then I think we could definitely use him on this roster. I mean, the Knicks, if you look at the two areas the Knicks have to address, you would say it's going to be a wing that can defend and shoot the three, and it's going to be a point guard, whether that's going to be a pure facilitator or a point guard that can get their bucket and, 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 and let their guys eat off of that. So if we can put him in a position to maybe be someone that can step up for us, I, I think he can deliver if, if given the opportunity and if he continues to work hard. Also, he is a player that can knock down uh, shots and catch and shoot situations. So if there's a situation where there's foul trouble and – maybe Tibbs is not feeling comfortable with Frank Nitty because Burks went down and he didn't really call Frank Nitty's number. So if, if Word. there's a, if someone files out, if Rose files out, if Peyton files out, if there's something that happens and this guy has to have his number be called, I think he can step up for us. No. Yeah. I mean, like I said, he could shoot and he's somebody who, if he's on the court, he easily spreads the floor. So you think about a lineup for him with quickly and with um Bullock on the floor together, like that's a lot of shooting power. You know, teams are actually gonna have to focus on the three point line with us, but that's if that were to ever happen, which <laughs> I doubt. Yeah, shout out to Joe Keen. You you said what's up earlier in the uh chat. I'm not sure if I put it up on screen, but shout out to you. I saw your video in the uh Luke not your video. I'm losing my mind. It's been a long day. I saw your comment on the the Luca video I dropped. Uh shout out to you. Are you out there in Argentina, I believe. Uh, thank you for catching the video of uh, catching or checking out the channel, even all the way out there internationally. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, the Knicks out there doing their thing. If they can keep on swindling and finessing, then I'll be happy with what this front office is doing. I just don't want to go back to the days where we would have made a crazy trade like Lillard. Like, remember, like a lot of people were saying a, a Lillard deal would have been like a, 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 a mellow deal. But we're out here and we're doing these shrewd deals, these smaller moves that may pay big dividends further down the line, you know? Small risk, high reward. You never know what, he, what can happen, but this guy is a professional. He's played four years professionally overseas. And if I'm not mistaken, the league he was playing in is like the second biggest league outside of the NBA. I think you got the NBA, then you got them, and then you got the Koreas or Australia, one of them. Um, D. Burr has a question for you. Mm -hmm. said, does Lucas Hart oh, come off the bench in Argentina? I, I don't know. Yeah, I have to pull up the stats. I, I can tell you his minutes per game. 
Well, I think he comes off the bench. He came off the bench in the in the FIBA game against Frank Nitty and them. Let me see. I'll pull it up for you right now, guys. Luca Villadoza. Yeah, but that's great. I'm I'm glad that we ain't making no crazy crazy trades like that though. Because mm-hmm. Nets, they got about. I feel like after next season, it's quiet for the Nets because after next season, KD and Kyrie's contract is up. Well, not up, but they can eat both opt out. Because remember, they only signed four year deals with a player option. Mm-hmm. You think they'll opt out? Of course, because KD is still clearly worth max money. So, I mean, why wouldn't they? Because remember, the contract I mean, that they signed. He, he's a, he's a he's a max money talent, but I don't know. Uh, he's barely played this season. I mean, when he plays, he's elite, but when like you you come on you it, you know for a fact <laughs> teams are gonna offer max money to Kevin Durant. I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah, okay. To be realistic, yes, they're gonna offer him max money, but I'd be wary. The guy hasn't played all season. Well, I'm, I'm exaggerating. The guy's played <laughs> yeah. like 20, 30 percent of the season. Yeah, but one, a lot of it had to do with this COVID protocol thing. That is true. And I give you that. I give you that. I will give you that. A lot of it has the. There's no way that there's no way that after next season, all three of them are still on that team. There's no way. But they have to be. There's no way you trade all that for James Harden and let somebody go. You have to, because uh, unless they're going to keep play, paying out crazy money, and I hope they lose. I mean, and I know some of the Nick fans in here are also rooting for the Nets for some weird reason, but I hope I hope the Nets lose. Luca is still on their um, team website. Uh, maybe it ain't official out there yet. Maybe they don't know that he left. Yeah, right. Yeah, it looks like he is one of the starters. He was born eight eleven ninety five. Dang man, I'm getting old. Oh man. 47 Bud said, I'm bugging that they're not leaving. They could opt out, but they would just resign. Listen, everybody said that there's no way KD was leaving Thunder now. And then he went to he went to Golden State of all teams. I, I think Kevin Durant's going to do what he want to do. He's going to go where the most money is, especially if they lose. If you don't win with Brooklyn, I mean, he ain't staying there. And Brooklyn's not going to keep paying them if they lose. I wouldn't. Yes, they are. You see how much they traded for James Harden? They're going to pay that guy until he retires. And then they're going to put his jersey up in the rafters. (laughs) Until they move to another (laughs) borough. You know them. They're always moving. They better hope that he wants to stay, too. I don't know. I feel like if any of them were to leave, though, it would be Kyrie. Like, either like if if they all opt out, they're obviously going to go for Kevin Durant first and try to offer him max. I don't know what's going to be left over for, for Kyrie. Because if I have to choose between giving him a max or giving Harden, I'm choosing Harden. Yeah, but they keeping him. You got to you gotta appease him. You got to appease all three of them. I mean, I don't know. what. what I'm telling you, one of them is going to get greedy and want some money. Mm. And it might be hard just because unlike, unlike KD and Kyrie, who initially agreed to lower contracts just to come and play together, with DeAndre Jordan for some reason. Harden is used to being the man, like with the biggest contract on his team, getting stupid money. I don't know if he's gonna be willing to take a pay cut. I mean he's never had an issue before. You you make an interesting point, but I think I think the three of them will come to some understanding and they'll figure it out. Those guys want to win championships. So if they if they gotta sacrifice a couple pennies, I mean what's gonna what's gonna beat them over the head is the tax. You know, if they were still in Houston with Harden, then, you know, I would have been all right, but. He'd be good. Yeah. I'm telling you, I don't think he's going to like his paychecks. <laughs> Shout out to JD Sports Talk. Mitch oh, Dirt. JD was good. <laughs> he said, Inf, leave Mitch alone. That's it. Just came here to say that. <laughs> Make sure you guys check out and subscribe to JD Sports Talk. He dropped his own video uh, talking about Damian Lillard and the trade. So you guys can check that out. Uh JD Sports Talk. That's the homie JD. He's normally 
co-hosting the Knicks report. Got some fire content, Knicks and Giants. Make sure y'all go out there and check it out. Agreed. Knox ain't hungry enough. I wonder what they were talking about in the chat. Uh, I mean, you would agree with that though, Inf, right? Knox ain't hungry enough. I mean, that's the only explanation as to why he's riding the bench despite us needing three point shooting and him actually shooting good threes this year. The only the only thing that makes sense is that he ain't doing enough. What you call? And then they, they, the Nets owner, stupid. Rich, yeah, I'm about to say the know? same thing. Yeah, I think Listen, it was Joseph Sai. I think is they, their owner. This season alone, they're bleeding crazy money just with the arena not being 100%. Uh, it don't matter how much how rich you are, you're not going to want to keep bleeding money. There you go, Inf, getting all business-wise and all that. You're going to do pull out a spreadsheet? Listen, let me let me pull out the... <laughs> <laughs> you're going to start plotting things on a graph? <laughs> oh, what happened? My bad, if I kick this out. Oh. Got the Dawn Apple <laughs> mouse, man. You swipe right on the mouse to kick everybody out. My fault. We're back, though. Back and better than ever. <laughs> I know JD right now watch. You're like, yo, it's always something with keys. <laughs> Why are you? This ain't crazy. <laughs> D.Bird Bird says no to Westbrook. Facts. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you say what you want about Brickbrook, but he is doing his thing right now. Like, yo, know, he's looking Brick like it's clear, it's clear that the Wizards won that trade between Westbrook and John Wall. Like, it's clear now. Westbrook is straight up violating. Mm -hmm. Facts, facts. Also, like, right. my fact, go ahead. Inf. What do you think? Before I, before I start talking trash about uh, Brickbrook, this is probably my fault. We only have 23 likes and it's saying there's 90 people in the chat. So can y'all just do me a solid smash that like button? I don't like to interrupt y'all too much and say it too often. So can y'all just go ahead and do it for me now? It'd be greatly appreciated. Now with Brick Brook, man, he's a stat sheet, sheet stuffer. But I, I've never said Brook Brook was, was trash. He'd just be throwing up a lot of bricks. That's all. Nah, I mean, shout out to Wu Samar Ten though. He said, "Yo, we got Elf as our starting point guard. We ain't got nothing to lose if we got Westbrook." <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Like, how are we the fourth seed with Alfred Payton as our starting point guard? Like, that's yo Tom Thibodeau deserves Coach of the Year for that alone because that's insane. With um... this pick. Yeah, that don't matter. The Wizards still won that trade by far because they were clearly out of the playoff picture, and right now they they in the playing game. They they was on the second highest win streak behind behind the Knicks, and a lot of it had to do with Westbrook because before that Bradley Beal they was about to lose him. We haven't heard not uh, one Bradley Beal complaint since. So in my mind, they won. You know, they won that trade because they don't they kept Bradley Beal happy, and that's really what they wanted to do. And they got rid of John Wall and that crazy contract that he's on. He's on the same. Well, it's a crazy. So the only reason he, it's a crazy contract is because he's not Brickbrook. He's not. Well, he is Brickbrook. He's like Brickbrook light. <laughs> not even because he don't get you the rebounds or the assists, and he barely plays. I mean, he throws up the same amount of bricks though. If you want. Yeah. Yeah, that was another player but, I didn't want any parts of. Yo, they, yo, I don't understand what's going on. I didn't know they linked so many p people. To the Knicks, because I stopped buying, you know, the newspaper. I started the channel. It's like every day that they're, they're, they're linking another point guard to the Knicks. I'm like, yo, can y'all chillax? We are not going to be trading all our assets for 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 Brickbrook, for Bill, for Levine. Like, relax. We, we good with what we got. Can we build in peace? It's like literally any time a point guard says that they're unhappy, immediately it's the Knicks being tied to them without anyone from the Knicks organization saying anything. So, yeah, it's just people talk. Mm -hmm. Like, it is. I think that's the same thing that happened with Lillard. I don't think the Knicks said anything about wanting to go for Lillard, and I don't think Lillard said anything about the Knicks. But Yo. because he's a point guard who seems unhappy. May 4th is hilarious, bro. Hobie said he already icing his knees. <laughs> Westbrook on his way out the league. Them injuries are on the way. <laughs> He's wilding. 
Uh, and 47 Bud said, Elf is a starter in name only. He plays backup minutes. Word. Every game that he plays under 20 minutes is a game that I'm happy about. See, this I can I can agree with. He said, Brick Brook on a team-friendly contract would be fun. I think if you're not paying him 30-some-odd million dollars a year, then, that, yeah, that's cool. But yeah. not on our team. For him, I mean, he's a he's a elite competitor, but I just don't like his style of play. I like that he hustles. I just don't think his style of play is conducive to championship basketball. So he can put all the numbers he wants up. You know, he could be, you know, triple double, brick brook, and all that good stuff. But I just don't see him turning that production into a championship ring. And honestly, when I look at players that the Knicks should go out and inquire, I'm looking at players that can be steps to championship winning, you know, a culture. And I don't think Brickbrook is that. Brickbrook is exciting. He'll have the garden bumping, but we'll be bumping on our way to a first or second round exit every year. They can't even do that when Washington. Well, no, they might. They might. Yeah, they 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 end up. Uh, well, let me see what exact seed they are. I think they're a few spots behind us. Let me check up the Eastern Conference standing. I mean, you know what? Fingers crossed that the Warriors miss the playoff this season and next season, and then Curry just leaves and comes to us. <laughs> oh no, they're out. They're at the they're at the tenth. They're a game well, and a tenth, half back though from the Hornets. Tenth, tenth is technically a play. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Oh yeah, they're in. They're in. They're in. They're three games right. over the Bulls. You're right. You're right. No. Hopefully, because you you be seeing like when they be getting smoked, how tight Curry be. So fingers crossed that they just lose every game this season or next season, and then Curry just comes to the Knicks because he's literally exactly what we need—a star caliber point guard who can easily spread the floor. Because his threes is crazy. Mm, well, we got another point guard that can stretch the floor. They would they dropped an the article about uh, Tibbs talking about IQ shooting his crazy threes. His deep threes. They said, well, they got a four point, a uh, four point line at, at practice. I like to hear that from Tibbs. <laughs> Good. No, yeah. I mean, he, he has been hitting it a lot more consistently now. Mm -hmm. This is why I ain't trying to give up quickly yet. Like he's, he's exactly what we need him to be. And this is his first season. He's going to make, he's going to take dumb shots. He's going to make mistakes, but he's still a part of our winning season in his first year. Right. He plays decent. It's in a lot of our wins. So. Facts. I ain't giving Also, I want to shout out Nathaniel Perez. He's asking how we feeling about whiffing on KPG. We spoke about him a little earlier, and we felt like if it wasn't for those character concerns, then the Knicks definitely should have been involved. But of course, if it weren't for the character concerns, he wouldn't probably have been available. Huh? The whole triple double thing is wild overrated. I don't need my point guard pulling down ten boards a game. That does nothing for me. <laughs> Especially when the, you're only taking, like, if you used to watch some of them Thunder games, most of them boards are used to just taking from Steven Adams. And Steven Adams would be like, oh, yeah, I know what you're trying to do. Go ahead, bro. Go get your money. I mean, West, I mean, Brick Brooks is a, a talented player. I won't take that from him. I mean, I don't like his game. But when a player is talented, I'll admit they're talented. I just sometimes come up with funny names for him from time to time. Let's see. 47 Buds is saying, how is RJ too small to play the three when dudes like PJ Tucker, Robert Covington, and others are six foot six or smaller that play the four or five? I don't I don't think he was directing that to us though, right? No, no. They um he's going back and forth with a couple people in the chat because they're talking about RJ's size and how he's too slow to play play the two, but he's not big enough to play three. Yeah, that that's a a lot of people are, are saying that. I think he can do both. I mean, yeah. the one there was one bad time I seen him kind of get babied, and it was kind of crazy. Was well, like all the way in the preseason when he got babied by Sadiq Bay. I still remember right. that he babied him when we were playing the Pistons, and I'm like, "Yo, he's a rookie, RJ. You can't let him push you around like that." But since then, I think RJ has been fine. Yeah, I mean, plus he's still young. He's still a kid. He's like what twenty? Like he he still needs time to bulk up. Mm -hmm. Giannis didn't the way Giannis was in one year. Facts. It took a couple years, and now he's probably one of the strongest people in the league after being a stick when he was drafted. Yeah, so, yeah. So, I mean. 
Yeah. Just give him, I give RJ a couple. Give him a year or two. Let him work out with Randall. Because Randall's strong. Mm -hmm. Randall's surprised. Yo, Randall came in this season looking Aki. I was like, damn. I was like, <laughs> yeah, like yo. Least, like, there's no way he was always like this. Mm -hmm. But he put in the work, he put in the time, and he's reaping the benefits of that dedication. And that's all somebody can ask for in life. Lord, I, I saw a post that made me laugh. It was like a picture of of Russell, of Ingram, of Ball, and Randall, and then Kuzma. And it was like the, really, um, the Lakers really thought that Kuzma was the best out of this group. And it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, granted, Kuzma is a champion, technically. <laughs> I mean, but not because of him. There's a lot of people that are champions, technically. <laughs> I mean, you're going to put it on their resume, yeah, but I don't know if they'll want to lead with it. Like, oh, yeah, I, let, I, I won a championship. How many minutes did you play? Oh, I was a DMP. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's an accomplishment, yeah, but I wouldn't lead with that at dinner. Word. Yeah. But all right. Like the, the, no, I do either. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. If we're going to wrap it up here. Thank you, yeah. chat. Uh, I appreciate you guys pulling up and, and discussing the Knicks and their rumors and their transactions. It's a lot going on with the Knicks right now. For a Knicks fan, this is phenomenal. This time last year, it was all draft preparation. I haven't yeah. come on here yet and spoken about the draft, and I think that's phenomenal. I think that's great because we have something to work towards now and there's something to be invested in now. So thank you guys for pulling up. Thank you guys for joining uh, me and if, if anything you want to say before we go. I mean, nah, let's let's go out tomorrow and let's beat the Rockets. Hopefully we win by at least 25. Let's get this W. Uh, we'll be back on tomorrow. I'll discuss with Inf what time and then I'll, I'll let you guys know in a community post and a tweet. Once again, I'm Keese, joined by, joined by, look at this, it's been late. <sighs> Once again, I'm Keese, joined by my co-host, Inf, and we're up. Once again, bro, I keep doing this thing where I put it so far from the eye.